Well, today's gospel, we just heard the cure of the ten lepers and the one who came back. It's a very memorable story. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem and ten lepers approach him. Ten men with contagious disease of some kind. They were kept apart for obvious reasons. And so when they approach Jesus, they stand afar off, the Gospel said. They stand at a distance and they cry out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Uh, the word used there is ele eleison, like we say, Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy at the beginning of Mass. And Christ simply says, go and show yourselves to the priests, that is to say to the Jewish priests. One of their jobs was to certify cures, I suppose today they've been sent to a doctor to certify a cure. But as they go, they are cured. And that could have been the end of the story. But it isn't, because one of them comes back glorifying God, giving glory to God, coming up close to Jesus and falling at his feet and thanking him. And the word used for thanking is the word Eucharist, the Eucharist, the word we use for the Mass. And this man, it said, was a Samaritan. In other words, not one of the chosen people, but a rather dodgy schismatic. But it's worth focusing on this man. In many ways, he is the centre of the story because he's a beginning of the church because he's come from out with the Jewish people. In the Acts of the Apostles, which was also written by St. Luke, the first non-Jewish believers come from Samaria. They are Samaritans. This man is a forerunner of them. And he's also a forerunner of, we could say, Christian prayer, Christian worship. The others say, you remember, and he with them, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. But this man goes on to give glory to God. Now, at the beginning of Mass, on Sundays and Solemnities, we did it today, we begin by saying, Lord, have mercy. And then we move into the Gloria. We say glory to God in the highest. We praise you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. And we have the Gloria in Mass because of St. Luke, because the opening words of that hymn are taken from the words of the angels at the time of Jesus' birth, when they are announcing that birth to the shepherds. This man, as it were, doesn't just say, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. He says glory to God in the highest. And he worships God at the feet of Jesus, in the presence of Jesus. And isn't this what we do at Mass? He gives him glory at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, the great prayer of thanks. We say through him, with him, and in him, to you, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour forever and ever. And in a way, that is sketched by this man, by this man, this Samaritan. It's a sign of what 
we do each Sunday. He can teach us a lot, this fellow. Now God, if you'll pardon the image, God is not just a cow, a great celestial cow, whom we milk, get milk from. God is not uh, a petrol station, shall we say, where we go and just tank up. Or God is not just a shop or a supermarket and we fill our basket and go home happy. Now all of us are in fact uh, vaguely most of the time and sometimes acutely unhappy. We never quite have everything we want, nor do our friends and family, and we want them to have what they want. So we're always wanting things. We are always asking. We are always trying perhaps to milk life and to milk the goodness of God to get what we want. Fair enough. But do we say thank you enough for what we already have and then for what we receive? When we come to Mass, do we come just to get something, which indeed we do, the Word of God, the body and blood of the Lord, or also to give something, and first of all, to give thanks. Now this man wasn't simply obsessed by his problem. He had a real problem, leprosy. That problem was sorted but it was sorted by someone. It was sorted by God acting through Jesus. And so he threw himself at the feet of Jesus, not to ask, but to thank God in the person of Jesus. Because Jesus had in a way knelt down, metaphorically speaking, and washed his feet. He had put himself, God puts himself at our feet. But the response is, in turn, to put ourselves at God's. The Samaritan doesn't just go off saying, well, that's sorted, great. He comes back. He puts himself at the feet of Jesus, full of gratitude. I remember from many years ago, I think, Perhaps it was this very Sunday when this gospel was being read uh, and the monk at the monastery who was preaching and he said, our thanksgivings should not be less fervent than our petitions. Often our petitions are very fervent. We ask, we ask, we ask. And indeed, we may well receive. Then do we say thank you? I know a man who recently uh, had an operation and uh, he asked for many prayers before that happened and the operation went well and then he said, well, I would like for Mass to be celebrated uh, in my house to give thanks for my healing. That's the spirit of the Samaritan man. And at the end, Jesus says, stand up or rise up, go, your faith has saved you. Well, at the end of Mass, we stand up, we are blessed, and the deacon says, go, the Mass is ended. He may say, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life, giving glory to the Lord by your life. Well today, as I mentioned, as part of the year of faith, the Holy Father is like Pius XII before him and Paul VI and John Paul II, consecrating the world, entrusting the world and everyone in it, all of us, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now we remember at the beginning of the Gospel of St. Luke, the same Gospel we heard this morning, Mary shows great faith 
and she conceives and receives the Messiah, the Son of God. The Word becomes flesh in her womb and dwells among us. But what does she do then? She gets up, she goes to her cousin Elizabeth to help her, and in the Magnificat she praises God. She gives glory and thanks to God as a Samaritan would later, and as we do every Mass. A few weeks ago, the Holy Father asked us to fast and pray for peace in Syria. And by the grace of God, there was a change in the situation. And I'm sure he will be asking Mary today to ask her son for peace in the world. It's a great act of faith. And last night, at a liturgy yesterday evening, Pope Francis said this, Mother, we thank you for your faith. We thank you for your faith. The faith of a strong and humble woman. We renew our entrustment to you, Mother of our faith. So, may Mary keep our faith burning in times of difficulty, and may Mary, who is beside us at every Mass, may she fill us with the spirit of gratitude. We all meet people who are grateful people, and it's a very heartwarming thing to meet them. There's nothing worse than the perpetual moaner, nothing worse. Uh, but when we meet a grateful person, a person who's thankful for the little things and for the great things in their life, they, they lift us up. This Samaritan was a grateful man. Mary is a grateful woman. May all of us have our hearts filled with a sense of gratitude to the God who is so good to us.